So, uh, with the developer of uh, Ludosity, Game Informer went on in with uh, the Nicktoons developers to figure out what the hell's going on. So, a joint effort between... Well, how did the team decide which characters would be a good fit for the roster with decades worth of Nickelodeon shows to choose from? And that it was a joint effort between Lu Ludosity and Game Mill, where we all push for our own franchises or favorites. And once until we got a lineup, we can all get behind. From our side, we wanted fun characters from the shows we liked, which is why we have some more unlikely picks like Nigel Thornberry. Oh, dude, don't worry. Nigel has been memed to hell. You're you're totally fine. Wondering if people are going to like Nigel Thornberry. Uh, because it's called Nickelodeon, not Nicktoons, can we expect any live-action Nickelodeon characters to show up? Of course not! What kind of question is this? Will we see that any at you know, all characters or something from Are You Afraid of the Dark? There are no live-action characters in our base lineup, and we're currently not looking at to any for future characters. That's why it's called Nicktoons! You never know, but for now, we're focusing on cartoon characters if it fits with the rest of the roster better, and we feel like it can go a little wilder in the moveset with them. Yes, that's what they should do. They should have the uh, insane Nicktoons art style that is present in the game right now, and they should have uh, a character from Are You Afraid of the Dark or some shit that looks like they came out of Last of Us 2. That's a really good idea. Great, great idea. I like that. Suddenly, hyper-realistic Last of Us 2 looking Are You Afraid of the Dark kid. Good. Uh, what goes into the decision of reviving characters like Powdered Toast Man? He's fun! Hey, video games are fun! It's a great match! And he seems to have really registered with the fan bases upon their reaction. Damn! Damn, the fact that he has to say this is great! <laughs> He's fun! Video games are fun! We've seen gameplay footage of a stage from Avatar, what I expect from the original series or Korra. Hopefully your favorite all in due time! Well, we know that's happening. Uh, we went into the decision to go with rollback netcode for online play. Is online important to the team? Online and competitive play is extremely important to us. Damn, the Nickelodeon developers get it. We have rollback and we also have a great lobby system, both great for casual and ranked play. Fuck, Chad, I just realized that in like two and a half weeks, we're gonna be- I'm gonna be beating your ass with Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> just realized that in like two weeks, you're gonna be getting some of this smoke with my Ren and or Stimpy. <laughs> you know? Which features or modes can players expect from multiplayer or online? You can play in quick lobbies, uh, I'm sorry, lobbies or quick match. All modes are there, including sports ball. Our own fun mode we're bringing over from Slap City. It's sports with balls. Nice, so they brought back uh, the Tekken, Tekken volleyball, Tekken ball mode. Uh, fighting game fans seem to have taken notice, Nick, Nick All-Stars. Does this seem to be uh, a competitive game? Seen as a competitive game? Absolutely. This is a funny question because it's, and it's not a bad question, right? It's, it's interesting to ask a dev where it's like, are you making this game for a competitive audience? It's like honestly going up to, you know, the latest Lego Star Wars game and being like, hey, Lego Star Wars, are you putting in modes that have speedrunners in mind? Because anything can be speedrun. Anything that has a versus mode can be competitive. You know, it's weird that it's like, yeah, all, that's the way all fighting games work. That's the way all fighting games started off as like, the, the fighting games that you remember, Smash Brothers Melee included, were not designed with specific competitive elements and balance in mind. And in no way, they were designed to be as fun as they possibly can. So, the fact that it turned competitive, what, what made the game become competitive? Well, maybe because it was fun and people loved it. It was fun and people loved it. So people started taking it seriously because they loved it. That is the natural way of things. So to me, it's like, oh, is this game built for tournaments? Look at it. Not really. No, no. Is this game looked at, at being like a competitor to Super Smash Brothers? Look at it. No, no, it's not. It should be approached with this mindset. It's fun, video games are fun. And if people like it enough to be competitive with it, we're gonna put enough cool, fun stuff that people can. It's like the next question might be, is it balanced? <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Uh, was competitive play something that factored into your plans for the game? Yes, in fact, it was heavily suggested from Nickelodeon before we even had a publisher for the game. It's been there since day one. Cool. How many characters are you planning for the initial release of All-Star Brawl? And what are your plans for DLC characters and stages? Uh, at launch, there's 20 characters. Oh, that's it. Damn, I thought there was gonna be more. Uh, 20 characters with two more following soon after additional DLC characters that will be revealed after that. Okay. Many of the characters announced so far have iconic voices attached to them. Are the characters included included voiced by the original actors? If so, who's on board? Ooh. Our focus was to create the best possible gameplay experience for core brawling fans. 
and Nickelodeon fans across the globe. It is not as straightforward as one might think. And as we continue to build the Nick All-Star Brawl franchise, we will be reviewing all options, which may include adding VO down the road. That's awesome. That's actually really cool. Directly connotates that, listen, dude, we spent all of our money just to get the characters here. Listen, dude, if we make a lot of money enough to substantiate the hiring process of said actors to eventually add voices, we would love to do that. But clearly we don't have a lot of money. There's an obvious comparison being made to the games like Smash Brothers Ultimate. How does Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl differentiate itself from other platform fighters? In many different ways and small ways. Please see our extensive gameplay walkthrough. We released a little while back. We're aiming to make the controls a little easier to get into for new players. For example, turning is much easier in our game while having the full depth of play the competitive scene wants. That's a great sign, right? Where they're like, hey, you know what? Some stuff in Smash is arbitrarily weird and difficult. Tilts are still a weird thing. Yeah, getting used to Smash of where your character is facing is definitely a pain in the ass. Like that shit is 100% hard to get used to. So the, the fact that they're tackling those things is good. Like we're gonna make some things that are, that are naturally hard by default for some reason. We're gonna make that stuff easier, you know? We're gonna actually gonna make those things more capable that everyone can do it. But here's the thing, that is 100% a simplification, right? An accessibility approach. They are planning to make this game more accessible. And what is the thing that I always tell you guys? Accessibility is fine as long as there is something else to accompany it. As long as you introduce any of other any of the other elements like mechanics that actually allow the gameplay to expand, that's fine. More accessible is not a bad thing in fighting games as long as it's expanded. And judging from the gameplay, just the default gameplay of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, yeah, dude, they're going pretty crazy. They're going pretty bonkers with movement and mobility and everything like that. So yeah, you can make other things easier to do. You can make some of the stuff that's naturally hard in Smash easier to do as long as you expand it. As long as you expand the things we can do, cool. Totally fine. And that's sort of where this feels like. Will there be any fun references Nick fans may not expect? Can you give any hints on how deep the catalog you went for the game? Every move is referenced from the show, literally. Everything in the game can be traced back to something from Nickelodeon Universe. This is essentially what they did with like Dragon Ball Fighters, right? We want the players to discover these for themselves. It's been awesome seeing fans find connections from what they've seen so far, and we're excited to let them all get their hands on the game to uncover more. Ren and Stimpy were just officially revealed, but are there are any separate characters, do they work together in tandem? Ren and Stimpy are indeed in the game, and they are a single duo. We wanted a duo character because of the fun interaction between them, plus, as a bonus, it leaves room for one more character to be in the base lineup. That's nice. Does your team have any issues with Nickelodeon allowing certain types of characters? Not at all. There were a small number of characters that had global licensing issues, but apart from those, Nickelodeon has been up for all suggestions. They've been very supportive and enthusiastic in our collaboration. Nice. Does the team have an internal uh, meta for each character selection? No, we have all different types of play styles. Uh, so we gravitate towards different characters. I personally get my butt kicked no matter who I play as or against, but we can't wait to see where the meta goes and we'll be monitoring the balance closely. Nice. Will the music from these beloved TV shows be used in the game? The music is all new, but just like everything else, heavily referencing the source material. We noticed. Uh, release date is October 5th, and that's it. That was actually a really good interview. Some funny questions, but a really good interview. I can't believe we did not know the release date, and then they're like, yeah, it comes out in two and a half weeks. Hey, everybody. My name is Thaddeus Cruz from the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl development team. And today, I'd like to share with you the moveset of the lovable dunce, Patrick Starr. Patrick is a grappler by nature. All of his specials center around Patrick grabbing Patrick is a grappler by he nature. He excels at punishing blocks and thrashing opponents. <laughs> That's a weird gets sentence. The stage to keep control of the fight. <gasps> Let's start with Patrick's light attacks. Patrick's light neutral is belly bump. His light up is snack time. Oh boy, it's 3 a.m. And his light down is toot laser. I don't like that move. Let's now talk about that Patrick's move I don't like. air light attacks. Patrick's light neutral air is optic Psychic. ass. <laughs> his light up air is. Aerial snack time. And it's like down air is... Down swing. You'll notice that Patrick's light attacks are very short on range, but they make up for it by having lots of knockback. His light dash attack is... Star wheel. This attack's hitbox covers almost all of Patrick's body, which makes it a good offensive and defensive option. 
We're talking about hitboxes? Okay, fair enough. Now to prove that we can make moves out of just about anything, let's check out Patrick's strong attacks. Patrick's strong neutral is... No! This is Patrick! He just wants you to know that he's not a crusty crab. His strong up is... Trophy hat! Hey, if mayonnaise can be an instrument, a trophy being a move is fair game. The startup is somewhat slow, but very powerful if it of course manages they would. to hit. And his strong down is... Belly flop! Try juggling your opponents with his slide attacks, and then finishing it up with this move to really lock down some serious damage. Next up, let's take a look at Patrick's air strong attacks. Patrick's strong neutral air is... Star spin! Hey, just between you and me, I think he's a starfish. His strong up air is... Aerial trophy hat! And his strong down air is... Cone Crash. Just look at that form! Use at your own risk. Patrick's strong dash is... Spinning! It, it'll Lariat. be worth the meteor spike, right? Straight out of the bun wrestling competition. And you'd have to live under a rock to not notice Patrick's special attacks. Patrick's neutral special is... Star Slam! He grabs an opponent and smashes them to the ground. Keep pressing to smash your opponent up to three times. His up special is, I'm already a star. He turns into a superstar, flying upwards. After activating the move, you can adjust the direction in I'm which not, I don't know this many SpongeBob references, Any okay? Any opponents in the way will get grabbed and sent flying. And his down special is, Hug Driver. Patrick gives an unsuspecting that animation. a warm hug and then proceeds to jump and slam them to the ground. And if you want to be one of those players, you can also do this. Oh, of course you can. And for his top move, Patrick plays a of course mean you can. belly. Of course. Patrick stages the Flying Dutchman ship. This is an uneven, medium-sized stage with three platforms. Ugh, I don't like the way the Flying Dutchman is staring at us. And now, let's watch Patrick fool around with his moves in a real match. I wonder how it's gonna end. I wonder how it's gonna end. I don't like the butt laser. I don't like optic ass as a move. Oh, it began how I thought it was gonna end. SpongeBob tech or something, block! Whoa. Oh, oh, we need some different music. Jesus. Damn, Patrick is ballsy. For a grappler that hits pretty hard, he looks pretty damn fast, dude. very much for tuning into this character showcase and please look forward to more like these in the future all right cool it's funny how all these things are getting absolutely enhanced by just a small musical adjustment hello everyone my name is marcus from the nickelodeon also brawl development team and today I'll show you our latest character, Cat Duck. 
Catduck is a wacky all-rounder medium-heavy character with a special mechanic that allows him to swap between cat and duck. Certain attacks change depending on whether you are controlling cat or duck. First, really? let's talk about Cat Duck's down special, Tag Team. Not only oh, does for some reason I thought he was going to be a stance it character. It the stance in which Cat Duck is being controlled. The character facing forward counts as the one you're controlling, and certain attacks will change depending on who that is. I'm so confused. Other players may not know which way you're facing, but then again, do you? That's actually kind of neat. Covered, let's talk about Cat Duck's light attacks. They're like neutral is. Take this seriously. This attack is really just cat and duck fighting each other in a way that just happens to damage nearby enemies. Their light up is uppercut. <laughs> and their light down is head whip. Yeah, since you can back walk, that technically makes them a stance like character. Yeah, it's stretch. true. Both head whip and uppercut can be used to launch your opponents in the air. And then you can do some really nice converts with stretch that can even lead to a KO. Their light up here is twin spin. Wait a minute. What is this stage? Is this a cat dog stage? Am I am I tripping balls? This looks like a Rocco stage. That's their house. Okay. For some reason, it's it looked really similar to Rocco. To I don't know why. Some good chunks of damage. Very similar art design. No, there's there's their that cat dog guy back here. Dance. Use this to spike your enemies when they're trying to recover. And finally, their light dash attack is get a chase. Let's now talk about Cat Duck's strong attacks. For the strong neutral, Cat Duck has two variants: Duck's strong neutral, heavy punch, and Cat's strong neutral, little punch. Duck's heavy punch has God, a strong attack, so but it's also a bit slower. Cat's little punch, on the other hand, is a bit weaker but faster. Their strong up is Tucking Stone. And their strong down is Golden Hydrant. Now, let's talk about Cat Duck's strong air attacks. First, their strong neutral air is Springy Headbutt. As you can see, it works as a stronger version of their lag neutral air stretch. How With weird. Their strong upper, they have Duck's Fierce Flex. And Cat's Feline Fist. Duck's Fierce Flex is wider and shorter, while Cat's Feline Fist is longer but more precise. Their strong downer is Bouncy Bickering. Damn, it's crazy how there's like two, a bit two moves of every character, or I mean of every kind. Opponents on their way down. It's actually and kind of Cat an interesting Duck's character. He is a stance is character, yeah. Shot. Seriously, a lot of Cat Duck's attacks are just they fighting each other. Now, for the special attacks. Cat Duck's neutral special can either be Duck's Boomerang Bone or Cat's Hairball. They're completely different attacks. They each cool. have their own physics and trajectories. You can use Cat's Hairball to keep your opponent in check. And Duck's Boomerang Bone to trick your opponents. And because of Duck's boomerang bomb, the SpongeBob player is an idiot. <laughs> you can even hit it yourself to launch it towards your opponent. Cat Duck's up special is the Mighty. Finally, and most importantly, their taunt move. That seemed brutal. For Cat Duck's stage, the best option was, without a doubt, Cat Duck's house itself. This is a medium sized stage with an uneven terrain and three platforms. And who is that little guy walking back there? Is that Winslow Oddfellow? Now, let's see how Cat Dog actually fights in a real match. Oh shit. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Oh. Okay. All right.
Yes. How does the music make it so much better? It's weird, right? Isn't it weird? Fighting games when things all work out and come together, how they're just amazing. I'm picking the stage music for the ones I think that would fit the best. And I'm like river theme for cat dog. Damn, that was crazy. Cat dog looks pretty nuts, man. Like almost like limitless potential kind of character, you know? Ouch. Ouch! That was weird. Nobody to dry your eyes, SpongeBob? Is that what's going on? Right, just one tiny musical adjustment and everything is better all of a sudden. Dang, it's all exciting now.